Welcome back. You're listening to My Conscious Dad right here on your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. I'm in studio with uh, Flynn Beck. She's a producer, Hi. comedian, actress, show host. You also are a dancer. I was a dancer, yes. I, have, I, I had a degree in dance. And you're great at skiing. How do you know all this? I did a little research. I love to snow ski. I love to dance. And you speak several languages. I do. I speak fluent English. You're almost a complete package. <laughs> Just a, there's just a little it's bit of work. Emotional intimacy. Just a little bit of work. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm fluent in English, French, uh, a little bit of Spanish, a little bit of Italian, and then I can say like, I want your body in every language. Nice. So I have a couple questions for you. The yeah. first one is, have you ever cried and held hands with your boyfriend or a lover and just both you guys open up and just share so vulnerable and deep? With my ex-fiance. Yeah. Okay, and what was that like? What was that feeling like when you were able to create that kind of experience with him? Uh, well, I think one of the reasons why my ex-fiance and I bonded, uh, we had chemistry as well, but, but we had uh, emotional chemistry in that we both had similar upbringings. His parents had divorced when he was two, and my parents divorced when I was two. So we had similar hurts. And I had a really interesting gentleman, uh, actually my girlfriend's boyfriend, told me that we sometimes we connect as friends and as lovers and as whatever because we have similar pain. And so we had similar pain. We had similar ab abandonment issues, so um, which was great. But I think what the reason why we ended up, we ultimately didn't work, was because we were too similar. We were both too wounded. And I think that what I, I hope I have now and what I'm trying to attract in my life is more of a rock because I can be really emotional and I can you know get my feelings hurt. And I need the man to be strong and go, okay, we're going to get through this. And I think with my ex-fiance and I, He'd break down. He would run. I would run. We both ran. So it sounded like you were both broken and wounded yes. and lost. Yes. And you were able to yes. get together and share that. Yes. But neither one of you were able to get to the next level to yes. pull each other back yes. up. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. You're, 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 you're brilliant. That's okay. right. So you were able to see that. And then after that relationship, you were there for each other. It was, okay, what's next? And so now you look for the next relationship. But I think you want to be thinking of, who am I going to choose to share my life with where, where we both can work on ourselves yes i work on myself get myself to the next level and i pull my partner up or my partner happens to get to the next level and pulls me up and if you guys operate from that i i, I have that now yeah. i do okay great. i do have that yeah he, he he's open to suggestions i make and i make a little silly suggestions um mine are probably more like day day-to-day -day suggestions and i'm not going to share that on the radio but i think he helps me more on a deeper spiritual level and then I kind of give him more practical advice. I think that's I think that's kind of where, I think he's spiritual and helps me see bigger picture, and I help him see practical aspects. I like I that. Think. Earlier you were talking about Al-Anon. Yes, I'm a proud member of Al-Anon. For those of you, it's a 12-step program, and a lot of people think that means I'm an AA. Um, uh, basically, AA is for alcoholics. Al-Anon is for people that have been affected by alcohol. So um, I was affected by people that drink alcohol. So that's why I'm in. And then there's OA, Overeaters Anonymous. There's DA, Debtors Anonymous. There's a ton of there's there's a ton of meetings. Yeah, different um, yes. addictions. I mean, there's one for everything. But Al-Anon is to support the people that live with or or have, have family members or yes, lo or loved ones exactly. that are addicted. Yes. Because you guys go through a whole different process. Oh on your own. yeah, and, and, that, and that's why I, that's why I go for the takers because oftentimes the alcoholic or the drug addict is the narcissist because they put they put the alcohol or the fix the drug the the marijuana whatever it is above all before their children before their spouse That's right. before their job mm -hmm. and so the Al-Anon comes in there and takes care of the family, pays the bills, makes everything right. So that's what I had to do growing up. I had to make everything right. So you you probably had to deal with, in Al-Anon, the possibility of looking at yourself as somewhat of an enabler, too. Yes. Talk to me a little bit about that. What what is what does an enabler mean to you? Because we do, uh, me and Jazz do shows on this all the time about enabling. I remember, I remember, yeah. Uh, I'm an enabler. You know, uh, I think it's, I think for me, it's easier to go fix and I did some life coaching too. It's easier to go fix someone else than to fix myself, you know? And, and I have to say, comedy is very cathartic for me because I get on stage and I just share my pain. Nice. And Gary Marshall, a little shout out to Gary Marshall, who is a huge influence in my life. Um, he said in his book, um, Wake Me When It's Funny. Wake Me When It's Funny was the, what, the, title, the title of his book. And um, I, I love Pretty Woman. Like, best movie of all time. Pretty Woman, I just love it. For, for a myriad of reasons. But um, he said that in his book, comedy is pain plus time. 
Nice. So when I'm on stage, I'm just sharing my pain. But it's also a way to heal yourself. Yeah, it's cathartic. A lot of my coaching sessions is me getting, uh, creating a safe environment, loving, accepting environment where you're not being judged to get you to share it. Yeah. So on stage, you just give yourself permission to just share it out loud with a whole crowd of people. Yeah. And, I, and then and make fun of it so that you yeah. can kind of just yes. get over it, get off it, let it go. Yeah. And I'm sure after you said that joke for so many times, it's almost like, okay, I'm ready for a new joke. Yeah. And and it's almost and it's almost like when you say that one joke that had pain in it yeah. for a while, there's no more pain yes. in it because you said it so yes. many times. I'm not ready to joke about the last guy I was with. I'm not ready to go there. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in a year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's probably still too, it's too still early. Too, it's yeah. too soon. The wounds are still open. Yeah, the wounds are still open. Yeah, yeah I'm trying to kill those. I think that, you know, just... What a great opportunity, I think, for you to share some of that stuff with the new guy. If he has the context to be able to be that for you. If not, if you bring that in, it could actually scare him away, kind of push him away. Um, so it just depends. But I, but I think that when you say, I'm not ready to go there yet because those wounds are still open. I'm not ready to get on stage and talk about do that. You, do you share it with somebody that you care about? Are you oh, still yeah, kind yeah. of getting getting some of that stuff out? Yeah, I, I do that in my Al-Anon. Okay, good. My, oh, my okay, yeah. nice. Yeah. So what does Al-Anon bring for you? Oh, well, I have to tell you, I'm... I had a really amazing aha moment um, in Al-Anon because I was having a real difficult time letting the, the last guy go. And um, and they and so this is some advice for anybody out there who's having a difficult time breaking up with somebody who's not good for you. I couldn't let go. I just couldn't let go. So I was in a Even meeting. if you know he's not good for I you. I know. I couldn't let go yet. No, I was too addicted or obsessed or whatever the word was. But so if you're having difficulty breaking up in a men with a woman or a woman with a man or if you're, you know, gay, whatever transgender whatever whoever your lover is whoever, whoever your lover is and you know they're not right for you because they're not because they can't give you what you need or you can't give them what they need it's a two-way street absolutely then if you can't let go this is and this is my big big golden nugget then just loosen your grip if you can't let go loosen your grip so i couldn't walk away from the last guy um so because i just i would let go but then i go back i let go and i go back so i just eventually just stopped making myself available to him and then after a couple months he just stopped asking because I couldn't just say it's over you know what I mean but even even the breakups and then the coming back mm -hmm. and the breakup and mm -hmm. coming back you can also see that as letting go it, it, it's mm -hmm. almost like a, it's almost like a process I, I've I've seen people break up let, come back break up come back it took them three times, and they were then they uh, broke well, no, loose. No, we, we broke so, we, we broke up like eight or nine times. It was crazy. Wow. Every month. No, it was no. For us, I think it's just you were breaking up er, two or three times a month. Like once a month, it was ridiculous. Oh, okay, yeah, all right. Yeah, so yeah. now no, I can I see know, why, it, it now I can see why you're rolling your eyes, going, <laughs> yeah, no, I can't, I, I couldn't have, I couldn't do it like. No, that. no, no, I yeah. tried it. No, 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 no. no I'm it, thinking breakup. I think is, I think it made it hot too in a way because you break up and then it would make it hotter. <laughs> it was like the breakup sex. That's so, dysfunctional. It was very. Hello, I haven't I been saying that? Oh my god. Haven't I been saying that? You have. Yeah. Yeah. So Elanon taught you how to surrender a little bit at a time. Yeah, I like that word, Re surrender. Releasing the grip so that you can so that you can um, let the other person kind of see that you're not giving them what you've been giving them yes. consistently. I wasn't doing it for him. I was doing it for me. It was oh, all about me. Absolutely. It was, it was all about, you know, I was clear all along that I wanted more. I wanted more. I wanted more. And he was clear that... I mean, so he was clear, and I was kind of clear he couldn't give me more, but that we'd miss each other. Yeah. So um, it was it was a it was a merry-go-round. I love support groups because it's another form of therapy. It's another form of healing. It's oh, I also form. have a therapist. <laughs> no, no, I, I get it. But what, what I'm saying is that and God, it I've got like a lot. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I need a whole I need a whole village. It I need a whole it world. It doesn't matter who or where you go. Just go somewhere. Whether you're getting taught, where yes. you're learning, or you're growing, and then accept your journey for what it is. But I think when you sit still, st when you're stagnant, mm. and you're you're suffering and you continue to suffer and you're not at least reaching out to anyone it's not good I know, I yeah know. i know my heart breaks yeah for people that continually just over and over i, I was there i was there yeah. i was there for a little while what does it feel like to be stuck like that it was really depressing it was really hard it was really really painful it was really painful because i knew what i needed to do but i couldn't do it so um i went to a program i went to al -Anon. And then when you get in front of people that are either sharing their own stories, you kind of connect and go, oh, okay, your, your story sounds yeah. like mine. When the woman said, if you can't let go, loosen your grip, because I, 
Well, I kept letting go, but then I was going back. But I bet she she was saying it because she went through it. I don't know. Whatever. Because a lot because a lot of in those meetings, a lot of times people are just sharing their own experience and you're identifying. Yes. Yeah, so what we what we do as an ally on is we we make our partner our higher power. So I was making that gentleman that I was dating my god. Right. He was my god, and so really. You shouldn't make your partner, your daughter, your boss. The only God that should be your God is your higher power. So, um, yeah, it was just, I was in an unhealthy situation. And I, I think it was um, for a myriad of reasons, you know, my and childhood, the breaking up my fiance, losing my stepdaughters. Um, so that kind of stuff. So now let's let's move you to the present moment, moving yeah. you forward. Yes. You're in this this relationship I'm now. I'm in a healthy relationship, yeah. And as a, now it's, the relationship is a symbol for a possibility. Yes. For you to recreate and reinvent the relationship that you desire in your heart. And 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 here's another little golden nugget. This helped me break up with my fiance. There was a movie um uh, The Wallflower, what was it? The Perks of Being a Wallflower. Oh yes. And this really was a profound thing for me. It says you get the love you think you deserve. And so I'm tickled that I've attracted a really wonderful man in my life because um, I guess that means I think I deserve it. You do deserve it. And at a certain point, you also have to start creating a relationship with yourself if yes. you haven't already been taught that. And then you have to start loving yourself so that you fill that bucket up from within you. Yes. Because if not, you're always going to be dependent now. I know. Codependent on him filling your bucket up. Right. And the yeah. minute that he either goes through a life change or something I happens, know. You're right. your bucket's going to start depleting. I know. And then it's going to start to crumble. Well, thank again. God I have Alan on <laughs> <laughs> and friends. But no, it's true. It's true. Yeah. So you have to start loving yourself. Yeah. So do you love yourself? I'm trying. What do you mean you're trying? You can't try to love yourself. Okay, I love myself. Okay, then. how much do you love? So just in case you didn't know this, the way you love yourself is by self-declaring it. I love myself. There you go. And you have to start practicing that over and over again until the point where you actually, it becomes a belief. And after the belief, it becomes a knowing. It's just a practice. Yeah. I love myself. And so what you have to do is practice every day, finding little things that you love more and more about yourself. Aww. Every day, all day what long. What have you declared that you love more about yourself today? Um, I love that I can make mistakes on the radio and be off it and be on to the next moment with with. You can let it go. Absolutely. That's something I'm not good at. When we started the show, I was taking a couple notes and you were like, can I see your notes? Can I see your... You were so like, wanted to see what's, you know, is that is that the, like an analytical part of you? Um, Are you an analyzer? Oh, I'm a lot of things. <laughs> I'm, I, yeah, that's why I'm in Al Anon. It's, it's our thinking. Yeah, the, the, the wheels spin all the time. Oh my God, 24 7. And just so you know, that part of you, that analytical part of you, is going to be one of the things that you're going to have to figure out how to slow down yeah. or stop or pause to be able to be in the moment. I'm in the moment with you now. I know you are. And, and, and. Can you tell? I can, a little bit more than you were when you first got here. When you first got here, you were I just, was in presenter mode. Yeah, you, yeah, the promoter came out in you. You're, you're, you're a natural promoter yeah, at your personality. Yeah, but don't style. you think I've been vulnerable with you? Absolutely. Yeah? Absolutely. Do you want to make me cry? <laughs> Is that your goal to get me to cry? I don't cry? know if I can make you cry because you have this laugh about you that doesn't allow you to just really kind of stay in the moment. Oh. Did you know that? Try me. Did you know that? Try me. I guess I got to hit the right button, right? <laughs> I got I to gotta ask those right right yeah. questions. And it also depends on how much you're going to let me in, too. Cause if I've told you a lot. You have told me a lot, but there I've broken through only a couple of walls. There's some more walls back right, there. Let's, let's break another one down. Well, there's some more walls in there. We gotta, I got to figure <laughs> yes, out what they yes. are. But in, a, in a, a session, my job is really to ask those questions that you normally don't ask yourself. As human beings, we don't ask ourselves certain questions that we're ignoring. And those questions, Denial, yeah. if somebody's willing to ask us those questions and we don't run or we don't deflect, which you're good at, by the way. Did you know that? You I'm deflect good at deflecting? Yeah. Have I been? Not to, not here, but one of the last episodes that I saw, uh -huh. you did some deflection. At, at what point? Did, 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 it was, it, there was uh, one of our board ops, good looking board op was here. And oh, you, Justin? You kept deferring to Justin. Oh, he was a little haughty. He I, was distracting. I know. <laughs> But you allowed the distraction. The, the, the host was, was engaging in a conversation. Yeah. I mean, a couple of times you kept distracting. Yeah, I like to bring yeah. people in. I kind of yeah, but that's that in our in our ego. That's some games that we play to not allow us to go down that road with whoever's asking those questions. Well, my father is a huge question asker, and he's got a great sense of humor. And he 
I mean, it's an act of God to get my dad to be vulnerable. But then he, but then sometimes he's vulnerable and then he really cries and he goes for it. So he's confusing. But my dad likes to be in control of all, all conversations. So I probably have some of that control, which I confess that I realized. Actually, we both dating do. that guy. Yeah, we right? both do. I'm a controller too. My personality style is a controller promoter. And yours is either a promoter controller or we're the same, a, a controller promoter. And, and being a controller promoter doesn't allow us, because that's our personality, it's kind of our ego. And when we're acting that or being that, it doesn't allow us to just be authentic and real and present in mm -hmm. the moment. I think when I had that interview with Dr. Curtis, I think I was pretty vulnerable. I think I was pretty... Well, she, you, but you've got a very big personality well, and she didn't. Well, there's different levels. Yeah, she was more clinical and you're like, you've got a big personality. There's different levels of vulner vulnerability. Vulnerability is when you get to the point where your voice cracks and you're allowed to allow your emotions come up and you don't care who's around or who's listening or who's watching. So there's different levels. And and you will, in well, your you journey... Gotta, we we got to be aware that we are on Facebook and we are on I, radio. That doesn't, so. th to me, that doesn't stop me. When I, when I give myself permission to uh, connect with the people that I love or what's important to me, I go there. Yeah. And so it just, it just depends on, you know, your ability to trust. And so do you go there on the radio show and get I emotional? And I have, I have yeah. a few times, especially with my daughter, me and my daughter, when we talk about our relationship, it, it just, it strikes a part of me because I love her so much. I love my kids mm -hmm. and my wife that when I start thinking about that, I go there. I thought it was sweet when you said in the, um, the, ep the, the show I saw that, you know, go up to your mom or dad and say, I just want to snuggle and watch TV with you. Like, or just, I want to hug. And one of the reasons why I go there and share that kind of stuff is because I do transformational trainings for teenagers. Oh, wonderful. And so twice a month, uh, I'm in a training room with kids that are opening up their heart and they're revealing some of the pain that they go through in their homes. And I get to hear those cries. And I'm crying with them. I'm holding hands with them. And we're, you know, deeply, you know, bawling because... Uh, there's a little kid inside of each one of us that just wants to be seen and heard. We want to be heard. heard. We, we want. We need to know that we exist. Yes. And a lot of times, our parents, in their unconsciousness mm -hmm. or in their fear, are so wrapped up in the daily things that they need to take care of or the things they're worrying about that, as kids, we can very easily be overseen. Mm -hmm. And so, my cry to parents is to remind them because they don't get to see. They don't get to be to that be present. They don't get to be that little eye in the room and watch what happens in that dynamics of the training. So a lot of times it's it's me to try to share some of those stories and convey those messages that our kids are dying for us to really be present and see a them for a million they are. percent. Yeah. And, that, and and that was one of the reasons I was in that relationship for so long is I got so much out of being a parent. And I I think because my mother had been divorced many times, my father as well, and and these little girls obviously saw divorce and I really got so much out of parenting these little girls and being present for them and being a stable force for them in a way i think i was also healing my childhood through them absolutely and you're going to continue in that journey to heal that child when we come back from the break i want to talk a little bit more about the child stuff absolutely and then uh i want everyone to hear what you're about and so we can well i want to flood that comedy store so we can jam pack that night for you i would that be love cool? that yeah. all right stay tuned for more of my conscious dad right here on your hometown station am 1220 khts and welcome back to my conscious dad right here on your hometown station am 1220 khts i'm in the studio with flynn beck she's talking about her tushy being saved <laughs> so um so, so hey, you're funny. We were talking a little bit about um, the little kid that's inside of us all that yeah. that needs to be healed, right? There's some wounds in there. We have yeah. a lot of time, and this is I've heard this, you know, been spoke from therapists. Sometimes they'll say that there's that inner child that we have that either has some trauma that we end up splitting from that person. And we sidestep and we create a new alter ego. They call that a split personality. And so what happens is we just keep splitting and splitting and splitting until we become somebody that we can't recognize anymore. But there is an authentic you inside of you. And it's and it's that little girl that you lost that was so free and full of life mm -hmm. and didn't care about what people thought about her. She loved herself wholeheartedly and all that kind of stuff. So our spiritual journey in life is to try to get back to that wholeness. Yeah and remember and reconnect to who that little girl is and for yeah. me it's that little playful boy that comes out and and is freed up to be able to love people and give of myself and so um tell me a little bit about that little girl do you know anything about that I, yeah i do in fact if you go to um facebook 
I have a comedy, I have Flynn Beck personal, and I have Flynn Beck comedian, and my cover picture is me as a little girl. And um, I, that was, a, it was a, I feel like I was super happy. I didn't have to pay bills. You know, I didn't, I didn't really, I wasn't in a, in a relationship with a boy, because that can be complicated. I mean, I've always been boy crazy. I always like boys. But, um, you know, I was just happy-go-lucky. I was like maybe second grade. I was happy, you know, and um, I don't know. I just remember it was a happy time in my life. I mean, I would, I've, I've never really had a filter. I try to, as an adult, have a filter. But I just kind of did and said and was like a happy little light girl. But I, my father did say to me that I'm sensitive. He's like, because I would cry easily. But I didn't care. I would just cry if I felt like it. Yeah. I didn't have any judgment on it. But that's so awesome. That's where the freedom comes yeah. from. Yeah. Are you like that now? Or do you, do you try to be that? Um... Do you give yourself permission to, when your emotions come up, to just allow yourself to feel it? Yeah, yeah, okay. I think I do. I think no matter I do. where you're at, like in a coffee shop, you're talking with someone. I think I and can. And it comes up, you just let yourself. I think I can. Okay. I think I can. Yeah, I mean, I think I have to feel comfortable with the person I'm with. You Absolutely. Know, I think that. But if I feel comfortable with the person I'm with, I think I can cry. Yeah. That's important because the per the people that you're with, their context has a lot to do with it. If they're uh, if they're whole and complete, if they're centered and grounded, if they're a safe space, yeah. meaning who they're being is a safe space where you feel, uh, you know, taken care of and appreciated and adored, um, then you can very yeah. easily that it will just yeah. happen organically. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Instead of wondering why you can't be like that when you're in a relationship. Yes. You know, it's funny. A lot of times I'll hear people say, you know, I've been married for 20, 30 years and I still feel alone. Yes, I have heard that. And a lot of times, the alone that feeling of being alone is that they put up walls, and they keep people at bay because they're afraid to get hurt. Mm -hmm. and so that emotional intimacy is not there anymore because they just. Or maybe it was never there in the first place. They, well, it was there when they were little. See, here's the theory that people forget is when we were little, when we were born, we were born purely magnificent, authentic, open. When you were two years old, four years old, you were that being that was so yeah. beautiful and, and trusting and open. What happened was we started to get hurt. We started to get our feelings yeah. hurt. So what happened is we started our siblings, to our put family, walls yeah. up. Yeah. So we were there at one point. We just forgot. And, and people have all these huge, like... Thick. Thick, thick, yeah. That's why I said when you were saying, hey, I was being vulnerable today. I said, yeah, I cracked a couple of yeah. layers, but there's more in there oh, yeah. to get to. Yes. And, uh, yes. and hopefully this guy that you're with can draw that out of you because I think that there's uh, some amazing, more amazing light inside of you that's ready to come out and shine. Oh, thank yeah. you. And I want to appreciate, you know, you taking the time to come here and, and, and be here and be a part of uh, the, a contribution to the show. Absolutely, my pleasure. So let's tell everybody where you're at. You're going to be at the Comedy Store, yes. right? So tell us a little bit about that. You're producing that? I'm producing How does that it. look like to produce a show? So basically, I choose the comics. So I, I find people I think are funny. And I get them to say, are you available? And then I, the Comedy Store gives me the, the, the time. And then I just send out an invite on Facebook and call my friends and say, please come and send them a link. And they get tickets and they come and laugh and, you know, have a good time. And so it's called Joke-A-Dope. Joke-A-Dope. Almost like Rope-A-Dope. Yeah, you know what? They by actually, Muhammad Ali. Yeah, they had Rope-A-Dope on there. And I thought that was like a good, a good name for a subpar dating site. <laughs> But um, but then I realized Muhammad Ali, yeah. So yeah, I like that. Yeah. You know what the rope of dope is, right? Tell me, tell me. It's it's uh, it was Muhammad Ali. He he'd lean up against the rope like that. So every time his opponent would swing, he would just bounce on the ropes, and he would just they it would look like they had him up against the ropes where they can take advantage yeah. of him, and he would just lean back, and they they would miss him all every time. Oh. And then he would come back and hit him, and then they try to hit him, and he would just play on the ropes. Do you think I should change the name to? No, no, I love it okay. because Joker Dope is kind of like it's a it's a it's like a tactic. Yeah. It's a tactic of being of being funny. Well, I wanted to call it No Joke Dope. No joke. I like joke dope. I know. When you said it, my my eyes lit up because, yeah, it's it's got a good ring. Yeah, to my it. friend Glenn Gravett is a graphic designer, and he did the he did the flyer, and he made it joke a dope, and he said, oh, it was an accident, and I was like, it's supposed to be no joke dope, but I asked everybody, and they said no, no joke dope doesn't have a ring to it. Yeah. So, so it kind of happened. At the comedy store, Missy Shore. Yes, she owner. owns that. Yeah, mm -hmm. right there on Sunset Boulevard. 
Yep, across from the Mondrian Hotel. And it's Hotel. October 13th on a Thursday. So what's that, two weeks from now? Yep, Thursday okay, night. Okay, 7.30. Yep, thank you. Yeah, I'm a, you'll see me in there. I can't I'll wait. I'll bring my family. I would yeah, love that. I have one daughter. She hasn't turned 21 yet, but uh, my, other, my other two will, will, will come I would love that. I'd love out. your support. Okay, sounds good. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Are there any other shows you got coming up? That's it for now. And then and then it's it's it's, it's the second Thursday of every second month. Second Thursday of every month. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's an thank honor. You. Thank you. Appreciate it. You've been listening to My Conscious Dad with Alex Urbina uh, right here in your hometown station. KHTS.